Right, I thought I would show you um, how I start my Cricut drawings um, so that I can produce a little video to show me at work. Um, I've decided to draw this and I usually draw from my iPad which I'm actually filming from um, so this image is quite small. Um, I haven't done a drawing of slips before and I've wanted to do this one for an absolute age so now's the time to give it a go. So the first stage of this little short video is to show you how I um, place the shadows and where I plan out my composition. There are some problems with this. First of all, there's some hands missing, so they'll need to be catered for. Um, the other problem is that the angle of the cricketers is going away from me, yet the perspective is still the same, which is unusual. And what I mean by that is the size of this cricketer here, because it's in the foreground, should be larger than the one at the back, but actually they're about the same size. Um, so I have got a couple of decisions to make. I could either draw them as an angle as it is now or draw it as a straight line, in which case this perspective will be correct then, um, or I could alter the perspective. In the end, I've decided that I like the way that that line is. Um, so I'm going, going to keep it like that. I'm actually going to keep the perspective the same at the moment in terms of the size of that one being the size of that, the same size as that one. Um, and I'm just going to see if I can get away with it. Um, the great thing about working with charcoal is that you can alter and, and rub out, especially if you work quite lightly at any time. Um, that's better with a light. With a light. Um, so I'll very lightly sh um, put, put in where I want the figures to go and I'll just see what the perspective is like. that you can still see the light. Okay, so initially um, I'm taking quite a large piece, quite a large piece of charcoal. And um, this is nitrum charcoal, which is quite new to me. Um, and I'm going to lay down what I think will be my, my kind of background. Now on a drawing like this, there is hardly any shadows on the ground. Go back to the picture there's hardly any so um, there's no particular areas of dark which is difficult because with charcoal what makes it so effective is when you have the um, light against the very dark of the charcoal and since there isn't hardly any on this one it's kind of difficult so what I've decided to do is first of all is I'm masking in this this line across here and, and that's roughly the same the same line that this, this will be the same angle. So I'm going to take my large piece of charcoal and just very just mask that line. Not thinking of anything more now than that that particular line. Make sure that roughly now the shadow moves that way. So I'm going to just lightly put some shadows in. And that will be where the area of dark is at the moment, unless I decide to change it. Also because um, it's important to put some ground shadow in, otherwise people look like they're floating in the air. So we keep, we're keeping this, this rough line. And then I've decided that the, the final cricketer that stands at the end, I'm actually going to invent a bit of a, sh a, bit of a shadow behind him. So that, that's there. My next thing to do is I've got five cricketers in a line and then one standing behind the other so I'm going to roughly mark in where they are going to be so the one at the front is um, a little bit away from all the others so very lightly marking where I think is roughly where his legs are going to be the bottom of his legs and then using another stick just to get my angle correct. The second cricketer will be roughly about there. Again this is really rough which is why I do it ever so lightly so that everything can be erased afterwards. 
and then still following this line we have a, a um, another hook to there another one here that's quite a nice shadow on the inside of his leg I'll roughly put that in and finally this one here he's going to stand in front of this invented shadow The next thing to do is just to check that I'm actually going to be able to fit all the cricketers in because if we follow our line correctly all the way up to here there could potentially be a problem with running out of space at the top of the page yet we have to start quite far down the page on this one. It's important that at, the, this, uh, at this moment I set make a decision about how tall they're going to be. So, taking my tape measure, I know that when I frame this, it will go in a mount and it'll be about nine inches. So, if I take my highest height there, my lowest low there, I'm going to put a very light little mark just to remember that they are my guidelines which that can be erased at another, point, another time so this final cricketer here can't go over that line and that's really stretching it I've gone right to the top of the paper so he's arms will put bearing in mind also I can't see the top of his hand so I'll have to write that in um, His hands will go roughly there and all the way down to his feet there. And that's my height, my determined height of the cricketers. Now, obviously, not all of the cricketers are the same height, but roughly, I know that, that that's the rough height. And that's probably the most difficult part of the drawing, even though it looks like nothing at the moment except a load of smudges. Because from as long as you get that bit right, from that we can build up the figures as they go along. And this is a quite an exciting drawing, it's a whole composition, all the figures relate to each other. Um, so I'll work on it a bit more and I'll produce another little video a little bit later. <laughs>